Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Joy this morning. It's good to have you with us. If you're a guest with us, we're especially glad that you're here and hope that you'll um, feel at home and uh, uh, look around, see some friends, or meet some new friends and come back and share with us um, again. Also, if you're visiting, if you're visiting, if you're a guest, we invite you to stop by our welcome center out in the out in the narthex, out in the lobby here. Um, we have uh, mugs, uh, travel mugs for people um, who are visiting and with us, and love to share one with you as well. Um, today is uh, uh, the end of spring break, so it's good to see all of you here. I suppose. How many of, have you been away? Anybody here been away for in the warmth anywhere for any period? Just a couple. Um, so I hope you brought the sunshine back with you and the warmth as well. And tomorrow is the first day of spring. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's supposed to get all the way up to what, 34? Something like that. <laughs> so. <laughs> every, every little step is another step toward summertime. But it's good to have you here, and uh, the sun is shining, and in fact, we get to celebrate that today um, in our gospel for today. We hear Jesus saying, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And uh, so no matter how dark it might be, whether that's outside or whether it's in our own hearts sometimes, you know, in our own lives can be kind of dark. But Jesus says, I am with you, and I am the light of the world. And I will be with you, and I will help you through. And uh, finally, it will be summer, and um, we will bask in his light and in his warmth forever. So um, this morning, um, we're going to begin with our children's message. And so I'd like to invite all of the kids to come up for our message today, as well as... <laughs> yes. As well as... Uh, there's a new Girl Scouts here, too. All right. So it's Girl Scout Sunday. This, um, well, actually, I think it was last week, but today we're celebrating it here. And it fits in really well because in the calendar of the, of the universe, um, uh, this month is International Women's History Month. And uh, Girl Scouts have been an important part of that history. And uh, Carmen is one of the Girl Scout leaders, and she's going to share with us about about Girl Scouting. <laughs> All right, well, um, good morning. I'm Carmen Burley. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my daughter is Annika. I know a lot of people have seen her in church. <laughs> um, and so this morning, we're celebrating Girl Scout Sunday, just like Pastor Tim said. Um, typically, it's last Sunday, but with spring break, we decided to have this Sunday be um, Girl Scout Sunday. Um, and so I just wanted to read a little something and I'll tell you a little bit about our truth. Uh, and so, yeah. Um, so Girl Scout Sunday, um, the motivation, motivating force in Girl Scouting is spiritual. At the heart of Girl Scouting are many of the same values most states hold, supporting girls, making our world a better place, Building compassionate leaders, Girl Scout Sunday celebrates the powerful ties between Girl Scouting and faith. Girl Scouts are encouraged to connect their faith to the Girl Scout law and learn the religious recognitions of their faith. Let's honor the Girl Scout and adult volunteers who give their time and talents in service of others. Um, and so our troop is a daisy troop. There's about five girls in our troop. Um, three of them are here today. Um, and I guess what we really wanted to say is thank you to all of you, our friends, our family, our church family, the community of Prescott. Um, these girls decided very last minute to um, sell cookies. And we, with all of your support and the support of the community, um, they were able to raise enough funds to send themselves to camp. So we're really excited for that. So, um, Anyways, if you were a Girl Scout, we would love to hear about that after church. Or if you were a Cub Scout or a Boy Scout, we, again, we'd love to hear about it. Um, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. 
So, <laughs> all right. So Girl Scouts are, are um, a really important and, and really wonderful way to, um, to connect to, as Carmen was saying, to connect to our faith, to, connect to God. You talk about God. Um, uh, it's about service, and Girl Scouts are going to are serving today. They greeted you when you came in today. They're also going to help with the with ushering as well. So we appreciate your service that way too. But especially serving in the community and helping other people. Um, and uh, Carmen also mentioned compassion. Compassion means to feel along with someone else, to um, to love and to care for others. And so y you girls do that as you uh, are Girl Scouts, but that is something that all of us get to do as well, whether we're in Girl Scouts or whether we uh, are boys, and uh, maybe you're in Boy Scouts or, or not. Cub Scouts. Cub Scouts. But um, there are many different ways of doing that. And uh, we thank the Girl Scouts today for being examples for us in doing that. And we thank Jesus today, too, because he helps us to... Um, to grow as compassionate, caring, loving, um, serving kinds of people, just like he was um, in, in the world and as he is in our life as well. So, um, oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, that was a good way to serve. But anyway, so today we're going we're gonna to pray for the Girl Scouts, and we'll pray for each of us, all of us, and that God would, and Cub Scouts too, that God would help us to, to, um, to connect to him, to love him, and then to, to serve and to care like he has. So let's pray, okay? Dear God, we thank you for the Girl Scouts today, for the many girls and women through the years who have served and cared and been examples and leaders. Bless our Girl Scouts. Help them as they serve. And be with each of us, whether we are girls or boys, and help us to love you, to love others, and to serve as you have served us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I guess the Girl Scouts are staying to help us and, and to serve during the service. And the rest of you, if you're going to Sunday school, you can go and do that now. Okay? Thank you very much. And then this morning, um, we're going to... Uh, begin our service or continue our service as the kids go to Sunday school by praying, open our eyes, Lord. In the gospel for today, Jesus says, while I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. But he comes, uh, as he's walking along, he sees a blind man and he opens his eyes so that the blind man can see the light. And he opens the eyes of his disciples and us too um, as he does that so that we might see the light and um, see him, but especially see our neighbors in need. So, will you uh, sing along with us? Open our eyes, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for me and for the whole world. And for his sake, now God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Into uh, a world that sometimes is kind of dark, the light of the world has come. Jesus Christ, he was born at Christmas time, and so I'd like to invite you to open your hymnals, um, open your hymnals to hymn number 292, 292. As we uh, transition from winter to spring, as spring comes tomorrow, we sing a Christmas song, um, 292, to celebrate the light that has come into the world, the love which has come into the darkness. 292. has come a light in the darkness love shines forth in the bethlehem skies see all oh, heaven has come to proclaim it hear how their song of joy arises love love born unto grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit then be with you all. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, O Lord Jesus Christ, as you heard the prayers of the, of the blind man along the way, and come and be among us as you came at Christmas to be with Mary and Joseph and the world in the darkness. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts 
and anoint us with your Holy Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from Ephesians chapter 5, and Sue's going to be reading that for us today. For once you were, in, were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention that such what, sorry, what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The um, gospel for us this morning is from John chapter 9. I invite you to rise um, as we hear this good news together this morning. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, um, which means scent. And then he went and washed and came back able to see. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can be seated. Now, um, I'm, I'm wondering, and it's always interesting to, um, to take this survey. Um, I am wondering this morning, do you pray with your eyes open or your eyes shut? Uh, now, I don't know because I pray with my eyes shut, so I don't know whether you've got your eyes open <laughs> or shut when we are praying, okay? Um, now, I know that we've always told kids to close their eyes when they pray. Have you ever done? I mean, yeah, it's, it's always a good practice for kids to shut their eyes. But, but maybe, um, maybe it would be a good idea if we prayed with our eyes open. For instance, um, when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, who are we looking at? when we pray that prayer? Who are we thinking about? Who are we focused on? Give us this day our daily bread. Now, I've got to admit, when, when I pray this prayer a lot of times, um, most of the time, I'm just thinking about me. Give me today my daily bread. Give me today what I want. Um, give me, Lord, today what I think I need. But have you ever noticed in the Lord's Prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. And to pray that prayer, I think we need to have our eyes open to see the us to see the others around us, and to see what they need. Now, in the gospel for today, Jesus and his disciples are walking down the street. And as they walk, Jesus sees this man who's 
born blind. He's been blind ever since he was born. And the disciples see this guy too. But the disciples, when they look at this guy, they see a man who must have done something really wrong to be blind from birth, or maybe his parents did. The disciples look through their half-open eyelids, and they see a sinner there sitting along the side of the road. They glance at him, and, they, and then they turn to Jesus, and they say, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he is so wretched? Somebody must have done something really wrong. Uh, the blind man's neighbors and those who had passed by him for years and years and years on that same street corner, they saw him as a beggar. Later on in the next paragraph after the one that we read for today, um, the, the neighbors asked, isn't this the guy who used to sit and beg? And some said, yeah, um, that's him. And others said, no, it couldn't be him. Now, these people had walked by this blind man for years. They had seen him there on the street corner, but all that they had seen was a beggar. They saw a guy that always had his hand out, maybe um, blocking the sidewalk, maybe an embarrassment to the community, certainly a bother. And so it's no wonder that they didn't recognize him after he got his eyesight because they probably just tried to walk around him quickly or looked away whenever they came to the street corner where he was begging. Later on in the story, these same neighbors then take the man to the Pharisees, to the authorities, so that they can examine this man. And when the Pharisees, when the religious authorities, the authorities in town, when they examined this man, what they saw was a rule breaker. This man hasn't kept the Sabbath, the, the Pharisees um, say. He begs on the Sabbath day, and he walked too far to get to the pool of Siloam where Jesus had sent him to be healed, to finish his healing on the Sabbath. And on top of it, he was healed on the Sabbath. And so as the, as the authorities look at this guy, they, they, all they see is he breaks the law. But Jesus looks at this man, and uh, he sees him. Jesus is walking by. He's on his way. He's got important work to do. He's on his way to Jerusalem to save the world, but, but he is not so busy or so self-absorbed that he doesn't see this man, that he doesn't really see him. Jesus looks, we're told, and he really sees this man. He, he sees the blind man's need. He hears the blind man's prayer. He stops to know this man and to, and to know his story. The blind man is, is not just some poor wretch. He's not just a, a bundle of misery on the street corner. He's not just a bother. Um, he's not just an excuse to feel better about themselves. Oh, my goodness, I am so glad that's not me, the disciples must have been saying as they looked at him. No, this, this guy, this blind man, is not just a poor wretch. He is someone made in the image of God. This uh, blind man is not just a bother either. He's, he's not just an annoyance. He is loved by God and, and precious to him. This blind man is he's not just a, a lawbreaker. He is someone that Jesus has come to give his life for. He is someone that matters. Now, I think the real act of grace, the real act of God's love in this story is not Jesus opening the eyes of the blind man. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a, a miracle, and it, it says something about who Jesus is and his power. But the real miracle here is that Jesus' eyes are open. And he sees. He sees this man blind from birth along the side of the road. The real miracle here, the really wonderful act of grace, is that Jesus has his eyes wide open and his heart is wide open as well to this blind man and to all of the others 
who are suffering and uh, not noticed along the way. All around us, there are people who, who are in need. All around us, there are people who are praying to God, help us, give us our daily bread, give us uh, not steak and, and, uh, and lobster, not just... Not, don't give us what we need for the next bit of our retirement, but give us, Lord, just what we need. Give us our daily bread. Not even what we want. We're not just asking for what we want. Just, we t- just need to survive, Jesus. Give us, please, our daily bread all around us. People are, are praying that prayer. Do we see them? Do we see these people while we walk down the sidewalk, while we drive down the road, while we read the newspaper, while we vote and pay our taxes? Do we see these people while we think about what we're going to put in the offering, why we, why we, while we try to figure out how we're going to use our free time, while we pray, do we see them? Most of the time when I'm praying, I, like I said, I, I keep my eyes closed. Closed, um, unfortunately, not just to the TV in the other room or the traffic roaring past my window, but to the people and the needs around me as well. I am and we can all get so worried and so wrapped up in our own lives and so focused on our own needs and wants that we don't see, that we don't really see the people around us, much less take the time to hear their stories, to uh, listen to their prayers, to know them, to pray for them, to stop and help them. But thankfully, Jesus does. He sees. He sees this blind man along the road. He sees us and he knows us too, and he loves us, each and every one of us. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, Jesus sees us, and he hears us, and and he knows just exactly what we need this day. We matter to him, no matter who we are or what we've done or where we've come from. In fact, we matter so much to him that he has entered into the darkness of shut eyes and self-centered hearts. He's gone into the place where the light of love has been bent inward to be concerned only about oneself. And there in that darkness, he has died along a road with people going by back and forth into Jerusalem who don't even pay him any attention. He goes there and dies on a cross and is buried in the darkness of a grave so that he could rise again, so that he could rise again and bring his light into a world that is too often so dark for others in their need and for us in our prayers and in our praying. As long as I am in the world, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. In the light that his love casts in the world. He sees you then. When we pray, when when you pray, give us today our daily bread. Jesus sees you, and he loves you, and he is with you to help you. Even if nobody else sees you or cares about you or is just walking past you without noticing you, he wants you to know that. He wants you to know that. I mean, that's why he teaches us to pray and why he invites us to to come to him and to cast all of our cares, all of our needs and worries upon him. We can cry out to him. You can ask him for anything, and he will hear you. He will see you because you matter to him. And so does everybody else in the world matter to him too. And that's why he teaches us to pray Give us today our daily bread. He teaches us to pray with our eyes wide open, to see the the people and the needs around us, 
to pray in his light, in the light of, of love and care, not just for ourselves, but for others as well. When we pray, then, we can keep our eyes open. Look around when you pray next time. Who needs something around you? Who in your neighborhood or here at church or at work or at school is, is going through some hard times? Who did you drive past today who could use some help? Who did you see on the news or read about in the newspaper or online that is struggling? So often I, I just breeze through the Lord's Prayer trying to, to get through it and uh, on to the rest of my day. <laughs> or if I slow down it at all, uh, sometimes it's only to think about something in my own life that I need. But Jesus says, slow down and pray. Open your eyes. Pray in the light of love and see the people in need all around us. Seeing them, praying for them, it's not the only thing that needs to be done for people sometimes. It's not the only thing that we can do, but praying, I think, is the first step in doing more, in reaching out, in helping, in loving and caring, not just in our hearts and in our prayers, but in our lives and our actions as well. So, shall we try that? Let's try that. Okay, so um, would you please rise? And uh, um, as you are able then, stand and uh, look around you. Look at the people next to you. Okay. Now look at the people in front of you. Now turn around and look at the people behind you, okay? And then, um, yep. And then reach out to the people around you and take their hands, okay? Take a hand. And keep your eyes open now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to pray it slowly. We're just going to pray it phrase by phrase. And I'd like to invite you to emphasize the plurals in the Lord's Prayer. In other words, our Father. Yeah. And then, you know, all the way through the us's and the ours. Um, and as we're holding the hands of the people next to us, you know, squeeze them, think about them, and think about the people in our lives um, that are not here, but who are joined to us by God's love. And so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And every time that we pray that prayer, maybe we slow down a little, we open our eyes, we look around, maybe grab the newspaper even, and, uh, and pray, not just for ourselves, but for others in the light of Jesus and his love. Please join us then in, in singing um, our next song, our, our sermon song, um, Longing for Light, We Wait in Darkness, We Turn to You. Christ be our light. Shine through the 
light of Jesus Christ, then we um, speak together our faith in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray then. Gracious God, we thank you that you invite us to pour out our hearts to you and come to you in prayer, casting upon you all of our cares and worries. And so today, Lord, we come not just for ourselves, um, but we come today for others. We pray for those who are sick and in need of your healing, for Katie and Ellen, for Iris and Bethany, for Kathy and Brian and Tracy, for Irene and Terry and Christine. We pray for Cindy and Barb and Kim and Sharon and Jamie, and Earl, and Denise. We pray for Gwenda and Van, for Sue, for Nancy, and Joe, and for Jenny. For all of those lords who are in need of your healing today, we pray for your, your peace and your strength and your healing. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray too, Lord, for those who are missing loved ones today. Um, we pray for the family and friends of Susan Knutson and Barb Ellison and Taylor Price, Cadence Allen and Aiden Nelson. We pray for um, the family and friends of Dave Finley. For all of those who are missing loved ones today, um, gone recently or, or who have gone home to be with you a long time ago. Be with them and give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Father, for all of those who are poor, who are struggling today to make ends meet. Um, and we pray, Lord, that you would provide for them their daily needs. Help us to see them and help us to find ways to respond and to help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for, um, for all those who are traveling on spring break. We pray that you would keep them safe and bring them safely home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the leaders of our community and of our world. We pray that you would give them wisdom and compassion and help them, Lord, um, like the Girl Scouts, to be concerned about serving and not just receiving acclaim and power. Um, we thank you for them and for their service and pray that you would bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray knowing that you love us all, no matter who we are, um, and that you will answer for the sake of Jesus Christ and for the sake of his love. In his name we pray. Amen. And so um, today, as we, uh, as we uh, look around us, as we pray, we reach out to one another to share God's peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be with you. And now when you say uh, the peace of the Lord to each other, look deeply into each other's eyes, okay? <laughs> At this time, um, we'll be receiving our offering. You can be seated. And uh, our Girl Scouts are serving us today um, by um, helping us with our offering. everything that we um, are, it all comes from you. And so we give you these offerings today as just a token of our thankfulness and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and proper that we should at all always and at every time give thanks and praise to you, Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. We thank you especially today that you have seen us in our need, that you have loved us and cared about us, that you have stopped to, um, to help us with our deepest need of all. You sent your Son into the world to bring us your love and your grace and finally, to go down into the darkness and uh, to give his life for us so that we might be forgiven and raised up with him to live in the light forever, to, in the light, be able to see the people around us and to love them and to serve as you have loved and served us. It was at supper on the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so this morning, 
as we come to the Lord's table, we remember. We remember how he sees us, how he loves us. We remember the light that he has brought us. And uh, we, uh, we come with one another, looking at each other too, and giving thanks for, um, for the family that he has given us, and this meal that we share, and the world that he has called us to serve. I'd like to invite the um, uh, communion assistants to come up at this time. We invite everyone to come and, and share in communion with us. You don't have to be a member of this congregation or a Lutheran, um, but come and receive the love and the grace that God has for you. May this body and blood of our Savior, which he has given for you and me because he loves us, and the world so very much. May it strengthen us in faith, help us to live our lives with our eyes wide open, sharing the light of Jesus that uh, he has given us and that is in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank and praise you again for the light that you've brought into the world in your son, Jesus. We thank you for, um, for the eyes, your eyes, which are wide open to us and to our needs and to our world. Be with us now as we go out. Help us to, uh, to pray and to live with our eyes wide open, um, reaching out with your love and grace to all of those who are around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you all his peace. Amen. We have a couple of announcements this morning. Um, the first one is uh, just a reminder about um, here at, at Joy, um, we're not giving up so much for Lent as we are giving for Lent. And just in, invite you to continue to, to bring um, things for our Lutheran World Relief um, personal care kits, um, uh, a towel, um, a comb, a uh, Finger, uh, fingernail, toenail clippers, a toothbrush, and, and bar soap as well. Um, and uh, we're collecting these um, for people in other parts of the world who are uh, experiencing disaster and, and trouble in their lives. So um, you can continue to bring those through Lent. And then Hope has, whoops, Hope has uh, several announcements. She's here in the flesh, so we get to see her. We don't have to look at the screen. So, but uh, thank you, Hope. I just want to call your attention to a booklet that um, Shannon actually helped us put together. It's, um, the, it summarizes the CAT survey that many of you helped us or take and helped us collect information, but we put it all together in a little, uh, little booklet. So the Girl Scouts will be handing these out as you leave church today. Pick one up, take a look at it, read it. If you have questions, comments, call committees on the back or any of us on council. So, so pick up a book. Hope, I have a question though. Yes. The, the cat survey? Yes. It's just about the cat survey. Did, did we survey about what kinds of cats people have? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can color the cats on the inside, so yes. there you go. Yes. But it's a congregational? Congregational survey, information from all of you that we put together. Yep, to help with our call process. Yep, for those right. of you who weren't here, at, oh, as a that's part right, of that yeah, because it, it does help us with our cold process, yep. which we are moving along in. Yep, very good. Thank you, I, You know, a little humor. It's cats. All right, well, I um, invite you to stand as you are able as we uh, celebrate, and uh, Bobby's got lifting up the flower thing, right, in the bullet. Yeah, Easter flowers. Easter's coming, so um, you can help decorate the, the church um, for all to see. Um, so thank you for doing that too. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Um, we pray that God would shine his light within our hearts so that we could have open eyes and see all the people as, as they have need around us. And so um, we have instruments. Invite the kids to come up and uh, help us to sing and celebrate Jesus Christ, the light of the world and the light of our hearts. Thank you. 
Go in peace, keep your eyes open, and serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God. Thank you all.